Let's start off with equity and valuation. So I'm gonna use Nvidia as an example. So every company has a balance sheet and I've simplified it into terms here. So debt is capital that Nvidia will take on. So it's gonna be borrowing this money. For example, it had borrowed $8.46 billion in October, 2024. Secondly, there's equity. So this can be taken in the form of private or public. In 1993, Sequoia Capital and Sutter Hill Ventures bought ownership into Nvidia when it was pre-IPO. The other form is public. This is where you and I can purchase ownership in the company. And this can be done through several different instruments. And one of the most commonly known ones are shares. And lastly, we have assets. So assets can be very easily calculated by just adding debt and equity. So this is the capital that Nvidia is gonna have at hand for selling ownership into their company or by borrowing money. So now let's say that you and I have purchased shares of nvidia right how great is that now what is that share mean to us what is the value of that equity so let's bring this concept of fair value it's the discounted future income in other words it's the discounted aggregated sum of return that we expect our share of equity to provide all right that was a lot of words so let's see if we can break it down into simple terms down below here so let's say today D0 is 2025 and then we're also interested in T1 next year 2026. Let's say that we expect Nvidia to give us $100. Wow, okay? That means we will say the fair value today is $90. Now, why is it lower? What happened? This is the concept of discounting, okay? It's very important. Now, discounting is the uncertainty and expectations. This can be taken in the form of all sorts of things. For example, inflation or liquidity or anything else. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the coming slides if this still isn't clear. So let's talk about financial markets. This is a place where transactions and shares of equity are made. In the figure down below, I've created a neural network where we can see the participants involved in the market. On the left here, I've listed investors. So this can be Two Sigma, DE Shaw Group, or even myself and you. Then we also have dealers and brokers. Now what is a dealer? A dealer, for example, is Citadel Securities. They're also known as a market maker. Now, they will trade shares and they will trade against and with investors by setting the bid and ask price and profiting off of the spread to provide liquidity in the market. Then we have brokers, right? So this can be Goldman Sachs, for example. So they actually never own the asset. Instead, they will connect an investor to another investor and essentially serve as the middleman. They will match them together. Now that we understand what the marketplace, let's start talking about what is the purpose of the stock market? Have you ever asked yourself that? Now, the purpose of the stock market is to set the fair price, okay? Let's take Nvidia, for example, okay? I've listed three prices here, $100, 125 and 150 So let's look at 125 first. This is what Nvidia is truly worth today. But most of the time, companies are not priced at their true price. Let's look at this right here. The Nvidia is priced in at $100 on the stock market. This is known as when the company is at a disadvantage, right? Why is that? That means that you and I can walk all the way to, you know, our broker and purchase shares, okay? Buy ownership into Nvidia, but we're purchasing it at a much lower price than what Nvidia is actually worth. So this is considered a company disadvantage. The other situation is where Nvidia is priced in at $150. Now this is considered a company advantage. Why is that? Nvidia is now able to sell ownership to people like me and you, right? At a much higher price than what it's actually truly worth. And this also is not a fair price. Now, this right here in black, the spread between $100 to 125 to 150, that spread is equal to investor opportunity okay very important this is what 
wants to trade. Now, who sets the stock price, right? This is investors. These are traders that set the stock price. This is also known as a discount price or expected return. So kind of piggybacking off of the information we learned in the previous slide, if we expect Nvidia to be $100 next year, we may set the price to $90 today. Why do we do this? This is because we're discounting, right? But on the other hand, we have Tesla, and we also expect it to be $100 next year, but we've priced at $80 today. Now, why is that, right? That's also discounting, but this discounting is due to the uncertainty that we have in these companies. And that means we are less certain in Tesla than we are in NVIDIA. Okay, now last section here is market inefficiency. It is said to be market efficient if the future information is priced in a security perfectly, okay? This only happens in an ideal world. This leads into this efficient market hypothesis where it pushes the idea that the price is fair, it is right. Now, this is a very key concept because quants like us, we do not believe in efficient market hypothesis. Why is that? There's three main reasons. First one being, we believe that prices are not fair, right? We believe that they are priced at a lower or higher price than it's truly worth. Next reason is we believe that spread, the spread that I mentioned before with Nvidia, is the absolute difference between the right price and the wrong price. We believe that spread is predictable. The third reason is we believe that that spread can be captured through trades. There is a caveat though. There is this concept of wisdom of the crowd, law of large numbers. So if you're familiar with the game GeoGuessr, this will be pretty intuitive. So here I've drawn the state of New York in green. And I asked a hundred people, let's say there's a hundred dots on here. And let's also assume that a hundred is a very large number. I've asked a hundred people to take independent guesses to determine the location of the Empire State Building. And right here, X marks the true location of the Empire State Building. These blue dots represent the independent guesses from our large sample size of a hundred people. Now, as we can see, even though some are scattered, a lot of them have been condensed around our true location. And the wisdom of the crowd concept essentially says that if there are enough independent guesses from a large sample size, the average will actually converge very closely to the true values. So I hope this all made sense. Please rewatch it if things were unclear. And I will see you back for the next two videos that I have coming up, which will be risk and return, and I'll also talk about investment metrics and strategies. If you have any questions, please comment down and I'll try to answer your questions as soon as possible. If you have any tips and suggestions on how I can improve my teaching style, please let me know in the comments as well. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy your day. Bye-bye.